Hi, I'm Kurt Ballou. We are here today working on my signature series library with Room Sound, Volume 2. A studio like Electrical, it's really well suited for getting, you know, huge room tones. And there's something about the difference between like working room mics really hard with compression and EQ versus a studio that has a just a large volume of air in it with a variety of different surfaces for reflections um, that sounds a lot different. My name is Steve Albini. I am the owner of Electrical Audio, this recording studio we're sitting in. I've always preferred recording in spaces that had some ambient character to them. When we finally acquired this building, I had a pretty clear idea what kind of studio I would want to build. There are a bunch of hidden things about the studio that only an extraordinary dork would ever appreciate, but because it was built by an extraordinary dork, like I, we did, we went the extra mile. If the room is physically small, then the reflected sound can be really troublesome, especially in low frequencies, because the low frequencies tend to fold on themselves and you get nodes of cancellation for different frequencies where certain spots in the room are dead at certain frequencies and things like that. So we sort of cheated a little in the smaller spaces where we penetrated the floor with a, a vent that allows the basement air volume to be coupled with the vol air volume on the ground floor. The way to picture that is the visible floor of the room is a platform that's halfway up in a room that's twice as tall as it appears to be. And what that does is that it extends the frequency response and prevents that sort of folding effect of low frequencies. The construction materials in the, in the rooms are, are also significant. We used adobe brick for essentially all of the significant construction in the studio. The adobes, because they're unfired and they're basically just uh, sort of amalgamated earth, they don't support vibration in the same way that a masonry wall or um, a carpentry wall would. If you have a conventionally constructed masonry wall and you tap it with a hammer, the clunking sound will transmit through the wall to the other side of the wall and you can hear it on the other side. If you hit an adobe wall with a hammer, it just goes thump and absorbs the energy and, the, and the, the wall doesn't vibrate and it doesn't transmit the sound to the other side. The surface texture of the adobes is also quite coarse and irregular. And that prevents the reflected sound coming off of the adobes from being too brittle. <laughs> 